How do you know if you have a rare coin? In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to make sure you aren't missing any rare coin worth potentially thousands of dollars. Welcome back to All Money Prices. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn more about rare coins and paper money, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Let's jump right into the video. Up first, we have a 2004D 25 cent Wisconsin statehood quarter with an extra low leaf. Look at this quick diagram. You either have an extra high leaf, extra low leaf, or no leaf at all. You wanna have an extra low or an extra high leaf on your quarter. If you do, it could be worth a lot of money. This coin that graded as a PCGS Mint State 67 sold for $2,220. Up next, we have a 2004D 25 cent statehood Washington quarter from Wisconsin with the extra high leaf graded by PCGS and Mint State 67. And this one sold for $2,280. Here we have a 1951D that D stands for the Denver Mint 25 cent Washington quarter graded by PCGS and Mint State 67 plus. So the first thing you want to look at is on the back bottom center of the coin you see the D mint mark. Depending on where the coin was minted will dictate what letter goes on the coin. This is the Denver mint so it has the D mint mark there. Next this coin was graded as a PCGS mint state 67. That means it's only three points away from the perfect grade of 70. It's really challenging to get in the higher grade but if you have a 1951 quarter that looks just like this you could have something worth a lot of money. You can see that there's toning going on on the coin as well. That orange color is actually a good thing that collectors really like collecting. Also, this has a CAC sticker. The CAC sticker is another third-party company that you send your graded coin off to get certified, and they will put the sticker on the holder only if the coin looks really nice for the grade. That CAC sticker alone can increase the value of the coin hundreds or thousands of dollars, but this quarter sold for $2,640. Up next, we have a 1932S 25 cent Washington quarter graded by NGCA Mint State 66. That S mint mark you see on the coin there is standing for the San Francisco Mint. There were only 408,000 coins struck for the San Francisco Mint for 1932. This is a relatively low number. Typically they are in the millions, tens of millions, or sometimes hundreds of millions of coins minted for specific mintages. The lower the mint run, the higher value your coin will be worth. This is a 90% silver and 10% copper metal coin. And because this one graded so highly, this coin that you could possibly have sold for $15,600. Up next, we have a 1951 no mint mark 10 cent Roosevelt dime graded by PCGS, a mint state 68. So if your coin has no mint mark, that means it was minted at the Philadelphia Mint. The Philadelphia Mint generally mints the most coins, but that doesn't mean your coin is not worth good money. This also has the full bands on the back. PCGS signify that this is a full bands coin. You can see on the back of the coin there, the bands horizontally are still all there. That is typically the hardest area to mint on the coin. It typically also gets worn down really quickly. So collectors, when they're looking for their coins, they look for this area here. If that has full bands, it increases the value significantly. Significantly. This is only two points away from that perfect grade of 70, and that's why this coin sold for $4,465. Look at this coin. Here we have a 1949S 10 cent Roosevelt dime graded by PCGS, a mint state 68. This is important. This coin had a mintage of 13,510,000. That's a good amount of coins. But you can see immediately that the coin looks like it was burned or damaged. That's actually a tone that happened to the coin, and that can increase the value a lot. Collectors, when they're collecting coins, look for things just like this. The biggest thing here is the fact that it was toned really nicely, and it graded two points away from 70, and this coin from 1949 that has the S mint mark from the San Francisco Mint was sold for $930. Up next, we have a 1939 five cent Jefferson nickel doubled Monticello, graded by PCGS, a mint state 67, with the full steps on the back. So let me break down what's happening here. On the back you can see Monticello has doubling happening. You want to get magnification to be able to see this. Any sort of magnification will do a loop, a magnifying glass. Just look on the back center of your coin where it says Monticello and see if doubling is happening. That doubling can increase the value of your coin a lot. Also above the word Monticello you can see there's full steps. Those full steps there are hard to obtain because sometimes they get worn down very easily. This one was graded very highly by PCGS at a mint state 67 grade and that's why this coin sold for $9,000 $300. Here we have a 1940. 
45p, 5 cent Jefferson nickel, graded by PCGS, a mint state, 66, with a tripled die reverse. When I say reverse, I mean the back of the coin. When I say obverse, that means the front, but the reverse of this coin has a triple die reverse. So essentially, if your coin looks like this, it has a triple die happening. The die bracket was tripled before it started striking coins, and that's why these can have this sort of mint error appearing here. But make sure you're looking out for your 1945p Jefferson nickel from the Philadelphia Mint because this coin sold for $1,140. Here is a 1959 5-cent Jefferson nickel graded by PCGS, a mint state 67 with the full steps on the back. Again, above Monticello on the back, you can see that there are the full steps. That is really important in combination with the grade here. The grade is a 67, and that's why this coin sold for $3,600. One of my favorite pennies. This is a 1955 one cent Lincoln Penny Double Die Obverse graded by PCGS, a mint state, 62 brown. It also has a CAC sticker. You can see immediately on the front of the coin there is doubling happening at the motto at the top, Liberty at the left, and the date at the right there. Any sort of doubling on your coin will increase the value significantly, especially if it's this dramatic. This is very apparent. You don't even need magnification to see this. Also, this graded as a brown designation. You can see the coin is very apparently brown. Sometimes the coins will come red or red brown. This is just a and apparently brown coin. Collectors like collecting different types of colors. This was actually graded a lower grade of a mint state 62. That's not as high as you'll typically see on these type of coins. So that goes to show that you can have coins that have gashes and nicks and scratches and still bring good money. Also, it has a CAC sticker. The CAC sticker is another third party that says a coin looks really nice. And that's why this coin, this one little penny, sold for $2,880. Here's a 1914 D1 cent Lincoln penny graded by PCGS Genuine. This coin was was unfortunately cleaned. Here is a good learning lesson. Do not clean your coins because that can decrease the value of the coin. Even if your coin is dirty and it looks like it could be cleaned up a little bit, these grading companies can tell if your coin is cleaned and that will decrease the value of the coin. So again, do not clean your coins because that can decrease the value. This coin sold for $2,640. If this coin was not cleaned, it probably would have brought more money. Here we have a 1944 one cent coin struck on a zinc coated steel planchet. This coin was also cleaned graded by PCGS a genuine AU meaning almost uncirculated so the big thing here is the fact that this coin from 1944 should not look steel it should have a more brown copper coated look to it and that's because this is considered an error transitional coin so if you have a 1944 coin and it looks zinc coated steel just like this one you could have something worth a lot of money but this one was unfortunately cleaned but it still sold for $16,800 hit that subscribe button it really does help out with the YouTube algorithm stay tuned for more and I will see you in the next video.